Well, good morning, Relevant. How you doing? Come on and stand up on your feet. Let's get ready to worship our God. Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited about digging in, learning more about we're sons and daughters of God? Amen. Amen. And with that comes the power and comes authority that we can say and things happen. Amen. Come on and put those hands together like this.
this week I, I had something that Pastor Chris asked me to send out an email to someone. Someone had reached out to him and he said, hey, can you reach out to this person? And I was like, sure. So, you know, I, I went online to the website and I went into the contact and I was going to type in the name. And I was like, well, he didn't, he didn't contact me. He contacted Pastor Chris. So I wrote in the email. I was like, hello, I'm contacting you on behalf of Pastor Chris. Um, we're reaching out about whatever he was reaching out about. And I was just thinking about how much more confident I was sending that email, knowing that I could say, I'm doing this on behalf of Pastor Chris. I'm his daughter. I'm doing this on behalf of him. And I was thinking about that just as we were singing that song, the authority that we have is not just authority for authority's sake. It's authority because we've been given a position. And how much more confidently we can declare that we are healed, that we can declare that we are free, that we can declare that sickness, that fear, disease, worry, anxiety, depression, that we are children of God, that we can declare that boldly and confidently, not in our own strength, so this morning as we sing this song, I just want you to remember that you are children of God. That he has given you not just his authority, but he's given you his name. And this morning as we sing that, I just want you to remember that this morning. Let's lift our hand in worship. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child Yeah, I declare that this morning. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Come on, sing that again. I'm no longer. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. mother's womb, you have chosen me, love has called my name, I've been born again to your family, your blood flows through my veins. Come on, let's declare it this morning. I'm no longer From my mother's womb, 
lift your hands all over this place. See, I'm no longer a slave. Just say, I am the child of God. Oh, I'm no longer a slave. If you believe it, say, I am. See. Sing that part right there. Never a slave to fear. I ain't a slave to fear no more. Come on. I am a child of God. Yes, you are. Come on. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Come on, tell them. I am a child of God. Yes, you are. Come on. I'm no longer. your hands to heaven this morning. Father, we just thank you that we are the children of God because you sent Jesus to take my place. You sent Jesus to pay the ransom. You sent Jesus to die and rise from the dead so we could have everlasting life. And we are taking our place as the children of God. And we thank you, Father. We bless your holy name and we magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody said amen. Praise the Lord, Lord of God, man. Come on, man. We're so happy you're here this morning. Get out of the aisle. Go shake somebody's hand. Go say hey to somebody. Meet them. Greet them. We're glad you're watching online. Thanks for sharing. We love you guys, and it's going to be a great day at Relevant. Come on, go meet somebody you never met before. Come on, get out of the aisle. Go get them. Hey.
again, welcome to Relevant Church. We're so glad that you're joining us for service here today. If you're brand new, would you take a moment and grab this card in the seat back pocket in front of you that says, Hi, it's so nice to meet you. If you flip it on over, fill out all your information here so that way we can stay connected with you even further. Once you fill all that information out, just drop it in the offering bucket or hand it to somebody wearing a serve team badge and we will be connected with you even further. We know that today is going to be a great day here at Relevant, so let's head live to the sanctuary. Well, good morning. How's everyone this morning? Come on. Caleb's going Caleb's to preach. Look at all these people. All these people came here to see you. He's hiding. What he's hiding. Now he's preaching. Now he's preaching off but my listen, iPad, Tony. Well, we wanted to, I wanted you to meet my friend Caleb. Caleb, is it okay if we come over here and you just wave at everybody? You know who Caleb is. If you don't everybody know who say Caleb, hi to Caleb. Wait a minute. If you don't know who Caleb is, uh, Brittany and Tony's da- uh, mom, and dad, uh, mom and dad are right here. And Caleb's here. And Caleb is the number one evangelist of the church. He's got all you people beat. He beat every single one of you. He gave out. He gave out 17 of these packets. Ain't nobody in this wait, room. Wait, wait. He was going to tell Oh, that. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Gonna take the mic. Wait, really quick. Preach. So, Caleb, Caleb, have you been very excited about inviting people to church for Easter? Is it on? Yes. Why are, videoing this? are you so videoing excited? This. Are you so excited to invite your friends so that they can learn about Jesus? Yeah. Is there another reason? Why else do you want your friends to come to church with you? That's awesome. Now listen, that one's not working, so we'll just use mine. Is that okay? So so realistically, last Sunday we said we have packets available for Easter to hand out. And by Tuesday night, Caleb had already given away all of his packets. Uh-oh. So his mama came to music practice, worship practice, and got him more packets. But guess who was in our lobby on Wednesday because he gave away all of those? Caleb, do you know how many packets you gave away? 17. 17. Come on, man. And Caleb's mom, Caleb's mom told me that it was interesting because how many of you know that the Bible says a little child shall lead them? And you know, children are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And how many of you know that his mom told me today that the children that he was giving the packets to were specifically children whose families didn't have a church who need to be in church. Come on, so he's inviting them to come for Easter. So I just wanted to introduce you and let you know that if Caleb can give away how many packets, Caleb? 17. 17 packets. I think how many of you can grab a few packets in the lobby and give those away Come for on. people? Caleb, you're awesome. High five. Yep. And guess what? We're giving you money. Pastor Chris said he's giving you some give you money. because. I'll give it to you in the back, okay? Go get my wallet. Pastor Chris said, I'm giving that boy some money. I would you all money too, but you didn't do it. Oh. So go, go, come see me. So uh, thank you. So give Caleb a big hand. Woo! Come yeah, exactly. On. And how many of you, so how many of you would say, hey, if I said Caleb gave away more packets than I did, and I'm the pastor. So me, I'm going to have to go get some more packets and hand them out. And then we have two weeks left. Listen, Easter is is the one day of the year that people it's statistically proven if you ask them to go to church they Amen. will Amen. why do you want people to come to church on easter yes would you like to say something else okay caleb asked a great question he said why do people go to church on easter It's a really great question. A lot of people just feel compelled to go to church on Easter who don't really have a relationship with the Lord. And we believe that if we can bring them in this building, Caleb, if they can come in here, well, they will get to know Jesus and they will be able to begin a relationship. How many of you remember when you didn't have Jesus and you walked into a church one day and he changed your life? Amen. So that's why we want to bring, we say this, there's, there's 51 other Sundays throughout the year that are for the, for the church. Easter Sunday's for the community True. to bring people in at a time and encourage them to come. Only eight more days? Eight more. Oh, well, two more weeks. Two more, more weeks. weeks. So we're going to grab some packets. We're going to invite people in the community. How many of you are excited now about evangelizing? Give Caleb one more yeah. hand. Come on. Awesome. All right, ready? Oh, you're, oh, you guys are leaving. Now I got to stay up here all by myself. 
Don't all you people come back next week and tell me you want money and be like, oh, I gave away 20 packets. You're not getting it. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, I'm just kidding. Isn't that awesome? Listen, man, yesterday was over the top phenomenal. They're going to play a video, but man, let me tell you, yesterday, you know, we came back, got in town. We, we ran to the church over like, I don't even know, 50 some odd, ba- 65 baskets of food, community, people crying in the lobby. Pete, you, you guys did it. Now, somebody said to me, well, I didn't go to it. Well, your money went to it. It's the truth. So, like, people don't realize this. I can't go to the f- local food bank. They win. You can't go, oh, I don't have any money. Even the outreach, all the stuff, right? It was like they were out there, balloons, wristbands. Let me tell you, I came here. I seen people in the lobby getting prayed for. I was watching you guys pray for them, lay hands on them. People were crying over here. Will, I don't know where Will is. Will Will was here, and the team was running around, and they were handing at Vanderbilt, and you guys were handing out boxes of food. Okay, I, seen, I seen these people's lives get changed. Parents talking about their, how they're going to – you hear the stories. Like, they were there, man, handing food. Like, people don't know where they're going to get food. And you guys blessed them out of their mind. I went running over to Walmart. We get over there. Forget about it. Jeannie was the Easter bunny. Phenomenal. How she sat in that suit sweating out there, I don't know. Praise be to God. But, and the kids, the kids, as soon as they see the Easter bunny, they come running over to talk about church. And I know, everyone's like, well, Easter's not about a bunny. Look, man, you're like older than 12. You guys should know that Easter is not about a bunny. You know what I'm saying? People make me laugh. They're like, Pastor Chris, you know the bunny. I'm like, the per- first person that talks to me about the bunny, I'm going to smack you. What do you mean a bunny? It's not about a bunny. It's about kids. Uh, hello? We know why we're doing what we're doing. They come because they love, they love, they, they, they love to see this stuff, and it's important. But you know what it's about? It's about loving the community, man. And watching those little kids' faces light up when they got an Easter egg and a little packet and a wristband and a balloon. I got a balloon today. Made me smile. Come on, I'm 53 for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? I, I got my, it's hanging in my office. You know what I'm saying? A little balloon will do you right. Come on, you see what I'm saying, man? But you did it. And I started seeing people's lives. And the ball field, I didn't get to, but they got a video. When you see this stuff today, it's going to, it's loving the community, man. It's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, the Bible says we're the salt and the light of the earth. We got to go love people. And this morning, you know what I said? Are we making a difference on the job? Are, are, you make, are, you, are you making a difference with your neighbors? Do you know, do we even reach out? And I had an idea, right? I said, how about this one? How about if you got a list of everybody at your job? Or all your neighbors on your block. Some of you guys have been living, I've been living in the same house for a while now. I know all my neighbors' names. What's it going to look like when we make a list of all these people you work with's names and we start praying for them? We don't even got to tell them. We just start praying for them. We start believing God that you're going to move, you know what I mean, on the job. You know what I'm saying? You might bring a whole list of people like, hey, here's Bob, Steve, Tom, this other guy's over here, a contractor. And we start praying for these people that you don't need Jesus. We got a responsibility, guys. So go love people. You know, I said this all the time. Listen, Jesus, Jesus, that's the reason why we're here. So loving on the community, loving on the kids. They went to the ball field. What I mean, I, I'm telling you, Lauren came back with a report of how many people just got blessed and was blessed because of the outreach. And you guys did it. And you did. And somebody said to me, oh, look what you, somebody said, oh, you did it. I said, I didn't do nothing. I showed up late because I got off the plane. And you guys were doing it. But we did it as a team. You know what I'm saying? We did it as a team. And you want to know what it's about? It's about loving people, man. You know, I wish somebody loved Come on, man. Remember when you were lost? Didn't know where to go to church. People, some people are church hurt. You know, like they don't where, they don't know who to trust. You know, like I don't even know where to go. You know what I'm saying? And you just just showing a little bit of love and just a little bit of hope. And we show a lot of help. Amen. Ain't this cool? Well, check this out. Look at 2 Corinthians 8, 9. It's offering time. Glory to God. Look it. And this is why we give. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It all goes together. Don't it? Like, you go to church, why do we give? We give so we can be a blessing. We give so we can do stuff. Well, look at what he says here. For you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that even though he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake, so that by his poverty we could become rich beyond measure. God wants you to prosper. Ain't that cool? That's what God wants you to do. And why does God, ushers, you could come. come. You want to know why he wants us to prosper? So we could be a blessing. 
So today as we get ready to give, we give because we love. And then we know when we give, God, we can show the love of God to other people. You ever thought of this? Just real quick, this is your point about giving. You know when you give, because we give, we can show other people God's love. Jesus said in the Bible, in the book of James, he said, they're going to come to you. And they came to him and they said, hey, we're, 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 we're destitute of food and we don't have clothes. He didn't say, tell them you're praying for them. He didn't say that. You know what he said? He said, you go give them from what you have and give it to them. People can't, people could hear the love of God, but they don't really experience it until they see it. The love of God isn't just in word only, it's in action. So this is why we do what we do around here. I'm going to give forever. Why? Because I know it's not about me. It's about touching other people's lives. Amen. Five ways to give, four ways up there, you know, in person, of course. But here's what I want you to know. I really want you talking, telling God what you have need of, believing God you received, and expecting God to do what he said he's going to do, binding the enemy and thanking God. You know how to do this stuff. But every time we give, you know why. you got to open your mouth because God's got to have your word. So tell God what you're believing God for. Expect it. Know it's coming. And walk in the blessing that God has for your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. Check this video out. It's really cool. We've got the outreaches on here. It's going to be awesome. It's beautiful outside, and it is time for Beautification Saturday, happening on Saturday, March the 23rd at 10 a.m. We would love to have you come out and help us beautify our campus, both inside and outside. We can't wait to see you there. As we approach Easter, we can't help but stop and think about what Jesus did for us on the cross on Good Friday. So we invite you to join us for our Good Friday service on March 29th at 7 p.m. as we kick off the Easter weekend, remembering what Jesus did for us. Make sure to join us for this powerful service. Hey, it's Pastors Chris and Lynn Sarno from Daytona Beach, Florida at Relevant Church. And I want to personally invite you to come on out to Easter at Relevant. We've got a service designed for you and your family. And I want you to come join us as we celebrate Jesus this year. So join us Sunday, March the 31st at 9 or 1030 a.m. We have something for everyone with incredible kids services, a giant Easter egg hunt immediately following the 1030 service. It's going to be powerful. You can go to our website for more information. But we hope to see you as we celebrate Easter together at Relevant. Today, we had our serve day where we had outreaches all over the city. We're so excited about it. Check this out. You're going to see all the places we went, all the people we saw, and all the lives that got changed. Check this out. Hey, we're at the Port Orange Field for opening day. Represent our kids. And we're having fun. Relevant Church, helping the community with our grocery giveaway. Hey guys, we're sitting here at Walmart right next to the church and we've got tons of people coming through. We've got the Easter Bunny, tons of eggs. We're talking about the big Easter service with the 4,000 eggs for the kids. This is going great. Come on, clap for yourselves. You guys did great. Don't forget, get your Easter packets on the way out. Glory to God. So this way we all don't feel ashamed because Caleb's burying us 25 to 1. Amen. Glory to God. Romans 4, 13. We've been talking about raining. Hey, listen, I want you to take the next. I want you to really write these scriptures down. Put them in your heart. We've been seeing really, really life change here. And it's important that you pull this in your spirit and you allow this word to really penetrate your heart. We've been talking about reigning. It's God's idea. God, God from the beginning, wanted you to reign in life. And reigning is about more than just, um, you know, just having dominion. It's you're supposed to reign in life as God wants you to reign. And reigning means a whole different thing. So 
I want you to really look at this biblical perspective of how God sees you. I think a lot of times we have to forget how we think we are or who we are and catch a revelation so you understand that God's life for you is way higher than your life. In the Bible, it says this, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That doesn't mean God's saying you don't know, you're not like really there. He's just saying he's got, he's got really cool thoughts about you. Gave you a really, really great benefit package, and he wants you to live up to the expectation of where he wants to put you. And Sometimes in life, maybe it's because of our performance. I don't, I don't know, maybe sometimes we feel like we're not worthy of it. We don't deserve it. Maybe we feel like we didn't act like that, that should be ours. But guess what? It wasn't given to us based upon performance. It was given to us based upon our position. When you understand it's based upon your position, you understand how much more God wants me and you to have the life that he wants us to have. So I want you to just take this whole month as we've been learning about this and just say, hey, this is my question to you. What does God, not what you've experienced, not what you see other people living in God like. Just lose all that for a minute. Not the, see, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And this is how I kind of felt this thing was going. We've had a lot of dreams we believed in. You know what? It didn't really come out the way we thought it was going to come out. We've got a lot of hopes the way we thought it was going to come out. It hasn't worked out like that. And I asked the same questions you ask sometimes, like, God, why is this? And I really felt like this. God's like, you guys got to figure out who you are. And if you see it the way I'm showing it to you, I promise you, this is, this is better today. This is why going to church is so important. It's better today than it was last month. It's going to be better next week because God just keeps peeling back and showing us who we really are. So just take these truths, run with these truths, apply them to your life, and know that we say we go from faith to faith. That means we grow and grow and grow and grow. And each and every week we're growing and finding out our true identity because you got to go to the beginning of this if you could see it, because this is really where it started. And that's why I don't keep you long. I'm not going to keep you all day, because it's a lot. It's a lot of stretching, because you know what I mean? We're a Bible-believing church. We're a Bible-preaching church. So when you're here, man, I know this truth I'm giving you is alive. So it's, it's, it's stretching your capacity. So I want to give you the plan of this so you can get an understanding of this. Once you get the plan of it, it'll make a whole lot of sense. you got to see, like, God made man in his likeness and his image. So God makes Adam, right? And when God forms Adam out of the dust of the ground, he takes the life within himself and blows life into Adam. So Adam's just like God. Adam is God in the earth. How was Adam made alive? It was God's spirit inside of him. He was one with God. And we all know that Adam and Eve were kind of working and navigating, and this all takes faith. So don't sit here and say, how'd this happen? How'd that? It's all faith. All you got to do is believe, but get the process of what happened. Adam's there and Eve, and you all know the story. And all of a sudden, Adam and Eve get basically deceived by Lucifer himself. And literally, God says, you can't stay in this garden any longer. You cannot stay in the land that I made for you. You've got to be pushed out, not because I want to, but because you have to. Because your disobedience puts you in a place where now, he even said there was an angel before to Eden, and he said, you got to leave, and you can't come back in because there's trees in here you can't eat of because you ate of the one I told you not to, and there's other things you cannot partake of. And now because you've sinned, you've basically committed high treason, and you lost everything for mankind. You might say, well, that's not fair. Well, guess what? It wasn't fair, but neither is Jesus doing everything he did so we could just come in through faith. So you just got to take one side with the other and say, well, what happened? Well, we understand that the minute that man fell in the garden, God now has to figure out a plan because he can't just go back and fix it. And they say, this is a little far-fetched. No, this is how the world was framed. And this is where faith comes in. And this is why religion is useless. It really is. Because it doesn't really preach the purity of the gospel. This is the truth. So now all of a sudden, God has to come up with a plan to get man back, and he can't just come in, like I said, and fix it by himself, because people say, well, why would God do that? Because God would be a liar if he just did it any other way. He can't just come in there and just do what he wants, and he's just going to come in and fix it. He said, no, he said, I made, gave you dominion. I gave you authority. So God's got to find somebody to believe, so he what? He finds a guy named Abraham. 
Why did he pick Abraham? I don't know. It could have been Noah. It could have been this. It could have been Elijah. He picked Abraham, and Abraham believed God, and he came with a promise. And the promise that Abraham received, right, that we're going to talk about today is the promise that everything that Adam lost, Abraham, through faith, got back for the church, through Jesus Christ. So we're not living destitute and deprived anymore. See, this is where the church has got to shift. You, you got to stop looking at it like we got to get it. We got to start looking at we got it and we're going to go down in a good way, meaning like this is simple. You're fighting way too hard for things that are already yours. And it ain't God trying to stop. It. See, here's the thing. The moment you start thinking God's involved in holding this stuff back, you got a problem. Well, maybe it ain't my time. I'm here to tell you, to tell you it is your time. Well, maybe it's not my season. I'm here to tell you today it is your season. Stop pulling all this stuff out of the thing and say what? No, God said today you're an heir. Amen? And look, if I'm an heir, yeah, you should clap for yourself because you're a whole lot higher than you think you are. Come on, man. Come on. Listen to what I'm saying. They say, well, you know, praise be God. Well, listen, well, who's trying to hold this stuff back? It ain't God. You got an enemy. That's the only fight you got. Stand there and put him in his place. Tell him what he's got to do. But your position of understanding creates more authority for your life. When you don't understand your authority like this, come on, the believer's authority is great, but I'm talking about a sonship authority. It's different. It's different. Your father isn't holding anything back from you. He wants you to have the world. And I got news for you, he gave you back the world. The world out there is cursed for the unbeliever because that's the way God said it. But for the church, it's blessed. He gave you everything in that world. Anything you want in there, and it's born in that because you're a co-heir with Christ. That means everything Jesus can do, you can do. He said everything. That's, that's part of the benefit. You're a co-heir, a joint heir. You're going to see this stuff today. So when you see it, just embrace it, hold on to it, and then all week long, meditate in it. That's what he said I am. That's what he said I can do. That's what he did. He bought it all back to give it to you. You walk in like a God man and woman in the earth. Angels don't even know who you are. You know, when I told you that in the beginning, people ask that question. They say, oh, why do angels in heaven go holy, 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 Lord God Almighty? They ain't screaming holy, 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 Lord God Almighty because of God. They're screaming, Lord God Almighty, what is man that thou art mindful of him, that you made him a little lower than God himself, Elohim? You don't think angels know who God is? They were with him in the beginning when he made the world. You don't think angels know who God is? Angels are trying to figure out who you are. The book of Hebrews says they cannot identify what man is. They've never seen this man before. The blood of Christ sits on the altar of God, screaming day and night as the accuser of their brethren in Revelations accuses you, holy, redeemed, righteous, and free. An angel, every time you and me slip up, that blood cries out, redeemed, forgiven, spotless, sanctified, whole, unblameable, unreprovable in my sight. And angels are going, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Why? Because you, he didn't make you a second-class citizen. He made you in the class of God Almighty himself. Made you in the likeness and image of God. Something about you looks like, next time you look in the mirror, go, whoa! Something about me looks like God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hey, I might be a little puffy here or there, but praise be to God. Something about me looks like God. Come on, somebody. Come on, I call it fluffy. D, I'm trying. I'm going to come work out with you, man. I'm going to work out with you. I just left Raleigh. All the guys in the sound booth, man, they're jacked. I said, I got to buy smaller shirts for crying out loud or something. Come on, I'm going to be Bishop tight shirt. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking if I downsize the shirts, it'll look better. I don't know. You think? I'm trying. Go to Romans 4.13. I'm just trying. Come on. Come on. Are you here? But that's who you are. So now, write every one of these scriptures down. Take out your phone. You all got your phone. Right? And put those notes in there, and then all week long, meditate. You know what meditate means? Just read it over. And promise me this this morning. You're going to stop believing about yourself what you think about yourself today. And you're going to believe, I don't care what you, listen to me, man. I'm going to slap that hope deferred thing right out of you. 
I ain't never, all right, I'm going to testify, all right? Because if I testify, it will qualify for your ear. T.L. came to me three weeks ago, wherever I was. She said, I've never seen you like that. I said, I've never been here before. I got with the boss the other day. You, you were gracious to let me out of our meeting. I leaned over. I said, this is a select few on the earth, is it not? He goes, it's an invitation by God, and most people won't respond. I thought so. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm floating in the place. It's really weird, man. Um, took me four hours of conversating to figure it out. Four, not two minutes, four hours. Why? Because I don't go in some place, I'm not going to take you with me. So I said, what do I got to do to break it down to get it over? Because if I don't get it over, it ain't going to work. You talking big, buddy. Yeah, well, I, I think big. And you should start thinking bigger too. That's why you come here. So I said, let me ask you this. Because I'm treading out here. It's kind of spooky. Because ain't many people you could talk to about this. There's really no one. So it's not trying to, oh, he's trying to impress us. I'm not, I'm not trying to impress you. He already impressed me. I'm not here to impress you. Uh, you should be happy I'm even talking to you about stuff like this because most guys won't. Yeah, they don't want to tell you all this stuff because it's like, oh, it's going to be too. No, no. I, I, I'm going to get to heaven and slide in real easy because God ain't going to say to me, oh, you held back. I didn't hold back nothing. If anything, you're over the top. So just keep going and just keep believing, okay? So what I wanted to know is I was like, man, there's not many people moving like this in the earth. No, it's an invitation. God's inviting you. Stop looking at your friends and stop looking at your past performance to whether you can go to this next level of life. It's a whole new day today. You ever go anywhere you ain't never been before? You can't experience some place you ain't never been before until you get there. We just gone someplace. You ever go to like Spain or someplace you've never been before? Anybody ever go anywhere? Port Orange, you've never been there before? Look, I don't know. I'm just being straight, right? How many of you went to St. Augustine, right? You know, like, I went to St. Augustine. They're all in the building, right? I remember the first time I went there, it was an experience I never had before. Are you here? This, 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 today is a place you've never been before. Stop looking back to the past performance and tell me whether you could work at this level. You can. Today's a brand new day, amen? So when you get it, bury it in your heart. Go, my next, my next half is going to be way better than the last half. Come on, somebody. Why? I know a whole lot more than I know right now. Come on. Are you here? So, pu so pull this up. Go, go, go with me. We're going to go slow. Romans 4, 13. Now, now I put it in the, pa the message. I like this. Excuse me. So pull this in. Everybody say, I got I got ears to hear. You know what I mean? You're ready to go today. The famous, remember those new scriptures I put in? We're probably going to use those, right? That famous promise God gave Abraham. See? Now you got to pull that in. Okay, there's a promise given to Abraham. Got it. That he and his children will possess the earth. Now, see right there. See right there. Stop. I'm going to possess her the earth, bro. I, Pastor Liz will tell you, I walk around. The other day, she looked at me. She goes, you're getting too far out. I said, <laughs> she tries to keep me sane. It's okay. It's too late. Right? So, you, you possess, the earth is mine. My father gave it to me. Jesus sealed it so you can have it. And you want to know why I want the earth? Because I want all those lost people in it. I've been running around telling everybody Psalms 2, 7, and 8. The lost people are my inheritance. The earth is mine. Them they don't belong to the devil. They belong to me. They belong to you. You ain't there like, when should I tell them today? They're my inheritance. The precious fruit of the earth is waiting for you. Somebody's waiting for you to go love on them and tell them about Jesus. Somebody's waiting for you just to say, God loves you. Somebody's waiting for you. That's why we want the earth. I don't want all the junk in it. You could have some of it. All you Harley guys, get a bike. All you people want to do this, knock yourself out. I'm down. Why? But listen, I'm telling you what. The famous promise that God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe, and he puts in motion... Everything that's in the promise. 
See, right there. I just got to be a believer of what I hear. Why is that so important? Because look at Galatians. We read it this morning. Go to Galatians 3.29. We'll come back to Romans 4. This is important. Well, who are you? You are Abraham's seed. If you're a child, right, of God, then you're children of Abraham. You're an heir according to the promise. What was the promise? It's a covenant promise, which brings the blessing. Look at Galatians 3.29. In Christ's family, I liked it in the message. It was good. In Christ's family, there can be no division Jew or non-Jew, slave or free, male or female, among us all, you're all equal. This is what? This what? We are all in common relationship with Jesus Christ. Got it? Now watch this. Since you are, who's Christ's family? You are. So you're in the family of God by birth. Did you get born again? When you got born again, you got born into a new family. You ain't in your family no more. Kingdom principles. You ever hear kingdom terminology? Who are you sitting next to? My brother and my sister. Well, you guys really are because you're, you know, but come on, right? But all you other people, you sitting next to your brother, you sitting next to your sister, you sitting next to your aunt, you sitting next to your uncle, you sitting in the family of God. The minute you get born again, you enter into a brand new family. Hello, Jesus, come on, your brother, God, your father. That's how he sees it. But look what he says. Since you are Christ, then you're what? Abraham's famous descendant. Don't that sound like I got a famous promise to go with the famous descendants? Come on, right? And what? And what are we? Heirs according to what? What? I'm an heir according to what? Uh, no, not just a promise, a what? What? what How does God take covenant? Pretty serious. I think Numbers 23, 19 explained it best. You want to read it? Why don't you just read it? It's my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. Ready? I could verbatimly do it, but let's just read it with your eyes. You need to see it, hear it, pull it in. This should become your favorite scripture too because it's mine. And the whole Bible because it always brings me back to God's cat. God is not a man. Woohoo! Come on, baby. That he should lie. Neither the son of man that he needs to what? Repent. You know what that means? He ain't changing his mind about what he said. He don't repent. He don't have to repent. You know what he's saying? His word is true. He ain't backing up. What? That what he should repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Woo-hoo-hoo! If he said it, he going to do it. Or he never would have said it. If he never said it, he ain't got to do it. But if he said it, he's got to do it. You better understand who you're talking about here. This is God. You know, I said everybody in the morning, everybody, well, who the richest guy in man? Jeff Bezo. I said, Bezo's a bozo. Bezo ain't got jack compared to God. God got it all. He own everything. People looking at this guy's yachting and impressed. Look what Bezo got. I said, Bezo's a bozo and say I said so. I'll call you a bozo. What you going to do about it? Come on. Come on. He said, he's going to come get you. He can't get through my security. Come on. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He got you. God's word is eternal and true. He ain't backing up. So what are these things based upon? Promises. Covenants. God don't break no covenant. He can't break a covenant. His word is sealed forever. If God broke his covenant, the earth would stop rotating right, go off its axis, and the world would explode. You hear what I just said? So God's honest truth. God cannot lie. So, so do we have to question God's character? No. Then why are you? Well, I don't see it. That's because you don't know who you are. Once you know who you are, you'll start seeing it. Pastor Chris, you can get it to manifest in a minute. In a minute. You walk out of this room today, somebody you ain't never been before, I say, look at my, up until now, I don't really care up until two minutes ago. I could care less. Because you ain't got, two minutes ago, you didn't have what you're going to get two minutes from now. I know who I am now. I'm an heir. What you walking around like? I'm an heir to the world. I'm an heir, my God in heaven. I'm an heir. You know what an heir is? An inheritor. You know what an inheritor is? See, here's the thing. Some of you have not gotten to the point yet of your position. Until you, don't, until you understand your position as a son, 
you'll never understand your responsibility as an heir. The moment you understand you're an heir, you're going to start understanding you're a Lord. Once you start understanding you're a Lord, you're a demander in the earth. And it ain't God holding you back from nothing. It's the enemy trying to say, that ain't yours. You know what you're going to tell that nitwit? Shut your mouth. Don't you know who I was talking? Be quiet. Stay over there, you little fool, and let go of what's mine, and you thief, I caught you. You're trying to take my stuff. You ain't taking another dime. You ain't taking another dollar, and I'm tired of waiting. I said, today, let go of my stuff. Today. The other day, I sit there. I sit there. I told PL, I said, I'm, I'm not bragging. I don't want to brag. I'm telling you, it changed in a day. A day. Revelation, knowledge catapults you into a brand new place of success. That's why you're here today. I don't know who I am. I'm an heir. I'm an heir. Remember what we read in Galatians? You got to go Galatians 4. These guys got to see this. Because I'm going to tell you what, I'm in an anointing right now. I'm in this anointing, and if you hear what I'm saying, it's prophetic. I'm a prophet of this house. So when I prophesy this, it becomes real to you if you'll take it. And if you, don't want, if you don't take it, though, you're going to miss it because Jesus tried to go to Galatians 4 and 1. This is brand new. Put it in the King James, please. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Prophetic. It's prophetic in the moment. You can feel it. That's why when I talk, it's not like hitting the ground. It's flowing. You get it. It's prophetic. So understand this. I ain't being rough. I'm just trying to tell you how it works because this is what it does. It takes your life and you shh. But you can't go, oh, I don't know nobody doing this. I don't know, I don't know nobody doing this. I know one or two people doing this in the whole earth. Did you hear what I just said? This is not bragging. I'm trying to tell you, how many people have been in church for all your life? How many people you know doing this stuff? Give me a break. Give me a break. But you need to be the one. You renew your mind. You know what you do? You go home. I told you last week, stop reading all these other books you're reading. Cut all that nonsense out for now. You know what I mean? Like you read your devotional or something. Like that. But y'all, I'm reading how to be a great leader. You don't need to worry about how being a great leader this month. You need to learn how to reign like a king in the earth. I'm reading a book about how I'm reading, I'm reading chicken soup for the soul or some nitwit thing. Put that thing away. Read that thing next month. I don't even know what that thing is. You know what I'm saying? Don't waste your time with this stuff. Don't waste your time. We're in a revelation right now. This is an open portal from heaven. Read it. I'm going to reign like a king. I'm going to go find all this stuff. Go get those scriptures and dig in this stuff. Where does it say? Go to get Google for crying out loud. Look up air and heirs. And then read those scriptures. I got another one. I got another one the other day. I'm sitting in there, and I got another one. Uh, I, you want me to show it to you? I'll show it to you in Hebrews. Just keep pulling on my gift, and then we'll get out of here in 16 minutes, right? But you got to keep pulling. You got to come to church ready to pull. Look what it says in 4 and 1, Galatians 4 and 1. Read Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that the who? Who's the heir? He's a what? As long as he's a what? Stop right there. What? How this don't make no sense. The heir, as long as he's a what? What's a child? An immature, unlearned one. Why does he say? Why does he say an heir to a child? He said once an heir thinks he's a child or is immature in the message or not spiritually grown up. Look at your neighbor. Say spiritually grow up. That's what I'm doing. I'm growing you up spiritually. You see this? Take a picture of it if you want. You see this? Are you here? Are you getting this? Am I making sense? He's saying, unless you become spiritually mature or spiritually grow. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians, God is waiting for you to come into full maturity, spiritually grow. How many of you know you're spiritually growing right now? Okay, so don't be down on you. You're spiritually growing. How are we going to spiritually grow if we don't have times like this? So we're spiritually growing, okay? Don't be like, oh, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Now we're all learning together. Just smile. It's getting better. Even though the heir, everybody say heir. Heir. When he's spiritually immature, or I don't even like that because some people think that's a little derogatory. When he's, he doesn't know who he is. But let's say it like that. That feels better. When the heir doesn't know who he is, he doesn't look any different than a been walking around the earth like some servant. Walk around like some servant like you don't know who you are. Too late, bruh. I went to church on Sunday. They told me I'm an heir, bruh. 
coming out this building with a glide in my stride, bro. Pepping my, man, me get out the way in the parking lot. Woo-hoo. The air show. Don't got to tell nobody. Just walk it. Man, I'm going to tell you who's going to know. Two people are the only two people are going to care who knows. God's going to know and the devil's going to know. And the minute he knows you know, he's going to know gigs up. Got to let that cat go because he knows who he is. She found out today it's relevant who she is, and now she's dangerous. Shit, that girl is dangerous. She ain't playing, man. She's going to get Louboutins and everything. Why? She knows who she is. She's scary. If it went over your head, let it go. But that's how I'm talking. I'm not playing. What I'm saying, it ain't just, it ain't just money. That money's the bottom rung. You a co-inheritor. These hands healing the sick. <laughs> These hands raised the dead. If he raised the dead, I'll raise the dead. This mouth spoke to trees and trees disintegrated. If it speaks life, life will show up. If it speaks death, death will show up. I'll bind you, devil. This thing's got power now. I'm a co heir with Christ. I got, when you see that, okay, I'll give you those. All right, all right, I need a pen up here. All right, somebody remember Galatians 2.20. You remember Galatians 2.20. You remember Hebrews 6. We're getting in the download. It's coming from heaven. All right, so you remember Galatians 2.20. You remember Hebrews 6. Don't let us leave here without Hebrews 6, and we're getting this, okay? Why? Because you're operating in a different kind of realm today. Okay? So now look at this, right? What he said. You okay with me? Look, pop that up there. Four, whatever we're at. One, two, three, whatever that was. Right? Check it out. Even though he's what? Read it all together, make me happy. Now I say, everybody out loud. Stop, who's the heir? Go ahead. If he's unlearned, he looks, the heir looks like a what if he don't know? Even though he's what? Even though he's what? No, he ain't. Read the Bible, bro. What? Lord of all. Who's, what, who, do, who is, who is Lord of all? The heir. Uh, it, uh, the Bible says something about king of kings. Who's the kings? Aren't you Lord, is he Lord of, who the other lords? You better, man, bro, you ain't ready for me today. Come on, man. Some of you should have took a nap, man. Somebody, I don't know what he's trying to say. Hey, wake up. You a king. You sit, look at your neighbor and say, you're sitting next to a king. Look at your other neighbor and say, you're sitting next to a lord. I want somebody to start calling me Lord Christopher. Hey, praise God. I'm going to try that at the house, D. I'm going to tell you, you start calling me Lord Christopher around here. My mother named me that. Praise be to God. I am Lord. Come on. No, bro. I'm not, look, I'm not playing and I'm not goofing around. This is the God's honest truth. It, but you see what it is? It's an internal revelation. You ain't going to walk around having servants. Some of you might. pray. If you get servants, invite me to your house because you're rolling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But wait, no, be serious. He said you're Lord of everything. Well, who you think is supposed to be Lord over the earth? You are. Who did God make the earth for? You, dude. God said he made the heavens for himself, but he made the earth for the children of God. That's you. This is your, this thing, this thing right here, you trying to scrape in here and scrap in here and just get a little bit, little bit. Bump that, man. I'm the king of all of it. I told somebody the other day, that building ain't yours. That building's mine. You say, well, they built it. I don't really care. They built it for me. Why? Because I know who I am. Come on, man. You got to start thinking like that. They, oh, God. They worked hard. They worked hard for me. Glory to God. Why? Because God wants you to have it. God will give it to you. Why? You better start thinking like God. Well, that, that is not how I think. Well, you better change the way you think. Think the way I tell you to think because the way I'm telling you to think is more real about the way you're thinking. It's a big old building. Probably cost them 80 million. I said, praise be to God. I'm glad they made that for me. Pastor Liz looking at me like, you're gone. What do you mean I'm gone? He didn't make that for no lost people. God loves the lost people, but he made it for you. They robbed my stuff. That, you'll get that on the car right home. They robbed your stuff. Take it back. They robbed your stuff. Take it back. They're trying to take your stuff. Take it back. Take it back. That's mine. I claim it. You're out there claiming stuff you ain't supposed to claim. What you mean it ain't mine? You better believe it's mine. If I want it, the kids will tell you, and it's sounded stupid. I didn't realize all this, but I'm putting it together. I said, if I want it, it's somewhere to be found. 
I would not have a desire. Listen to me and pay attention. This is prophetic. You would not have a desire for it if it wasn't yours already. God would never give you a desire for something that wasn't yours already. I don't desire things that are not mine. That would be covetous. I only desire what's mine. And if I got a desire for it, it's in the earth for me to get it. You'll get that on the ride home. That's good. You can be rolling around saying, I like the way this feels. That's because your daddy wants you to have it. You might be excited about it. You walk in there and say, I like the way the place smells. Praise be to God. I'll take it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your future. Even though he's Lord of. Come back. Come back. Watch. We're going to keep going. Look at verse 2. Remember we broke this down. But there's prophetic moment in it. But even though he's under tutors and governors at the time appointed by the Father. We understand that. But we are in full maturity. This is before Christ. But how many know Christ's been here? So we're in the fullness of it. So watch three. It'll make sense. Even so, when we were what? We were in bondage. Unknowns for the world. But I got news for you. What happened? Christ came. God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. Five. To redeem them. That means pay the ransom. That means buy back. That means purchase with blood. I've been redeemed, purchased by the blood. Come on. You're over there like, I'm jacked up. You ain't jacked up. You've been redeemed by the blood. He unjacked you up. <laughs> you were jacked up. You ain't jacked up no more. Come on, somebody. You better get excited about that. He redeemed them. That they might receive the what? Adoptions of sons. Don't that sound like Romans? Don't that sound like Romans? Yeah, it does. Same thing, right? Adopted you, right? Watch this. That what? Verse 6. Check this out. You're going to like this. And because ye are, he gave you his spirit. Whereby what? We cry out about Father. Verse 7. Watch verse 7. Watch verse 7. Wherefore thou art no. Who, whoa, 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 whoa. What did he say about you? Are you a son? Are you a son? Now, girls, you girls, the same thing. There ain't no gender. Are you a son? So then if you were son, you were what? Read that again slow because it has to sink in. Maybe when it sinks in, you'll get excited about it. Okay? Wherefore, thou art no more a what? Because you a. And now because I'm a son, I'm an heir. And I guess if I'm an heir, I might as well become a lord because he said, even though the heir is the lord, he don't know it. How you see yourself. I'm just some sinner saved by grace. You ain't no sinner saved by grace. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And once I figured out I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I found out I'm the son of God. Once I found out he was the first son of what? Many. I am the other son that showed up on equal playing field. He put me in the body. Hello. Now I found out I'm a son. Once I found out I'm a son, I found out I'm an heir. Once I found out I'm an heir, I found out I'm a lord. Once I found out I'm a lord, I'm running like a king. Once I understand who I am, I demand what's mine in the earth who in the world is talking to you to make you think you ain't what God said you are it's my own inner image change your inner image stop letting yourself think like that that ain't who you are I don't know how we're going to get this 50 bucks. Shut your mouth about 50 bucks. Go out there and tell 50 bucks you come to me now in the name of Jesus. You're in the earth. You come to me now. This thing's a package deal. And let me tell you something right here. You would join there with Christ. And let me tell you, show you, show, show you something right here. Remember when he said, he said this? Let me show you this thing, right? Because everybody's like, oh, it's just that. No, it ain't. It's the whole package. Watch this. Go to, go to Romans over here real quick. I got to give you those other scriptures. Hebrews and Yeah, don't forget that. If you fail your test today, you're going to get in trouble. Right? Look. Go over here. You ready for this? Check this out. Go to Romans 8, 17. You all right? You doing okay? You pulling this in? Say, I'm an heir. Say it out loud. I'm an heir. I'm an heir to a throne. My father owns the throne. Isn't that cool? What's yours? Everything. Don't leave it for me. You don't want me to have it. If you left me an inheritance, right? Say you leave me an inheritance. Say, Pastor Chris, I'm going to leave you this. Whose opinion was that? It was yours. If you don't want to leave me nothing, what you going to do? Not leave me nothing. Who's the dummy if I don't take what you left me? God could have just said, I left you with heaven. That's good enough for me. He said, nah, by the way, I, want, I left you as an heir and a lord over the earth. You're living over here like some servant. You ain't no servant. You ain't no servant. I don't think that about myself. That's why you came here today. 
So you don't think about yourself the way you want to think about yourself no more. I gave you revelation. You think about you the way I told you you are because you are that. I'm an heir, praise me, God. Heir, don't, heir ain't worried about that. I told Jerry, me and Jerry were hanging out right one day. What we were doing, Jerry, looking at fishing stuff or something, me and you. I said, millionaires don't care about that. We were walking in now looking at stuff, you know what I mean? We were walking, just goofing around, having a good time, you know, buying fishing tackle, jerking around. And I said, we were running around the store. What we sound like? Two crazy guys, Bass Pro Shop, screaming in the aisle. You know me, my big mouth. I was like, millionaires don't think about that. Millionaire don't care about no $50,000 boat. My buddy got an $800,000 boat. He, millionaire don't care about no $800,000 for a boat. The other guy got a boat. I don't even know what that other joker cost. Probably cost 10, 15 million bucks. Millionaires don't care about 15 million dollars for a boat. You're over there. I'm going to get a little, little rinky dink, $3 boat. This ain't about money. Pay attention, man. Millionaires don't care. Kings don't care. Lords don't care. Rulers don't care. The stuff you take and care, your daddy already gave you. Take it. And the only one trying to keep you from it is the devil, man. Put that joker in his place. Hey, no, you ain't dealing with me. I'm a lord. Shut up. Get your hands off my stuff. Angels go get it. Put them to work. Amen. But there's more. This is what I'm going to show you tomorrow. Look at this Romans 8, 17. You okay? I got three minutes. And since you are as what? My God, it even gets better. He said, not only are your children, you're the true children. You're the real, only real children. Because Israel thought they were the children of God, which they are. But they got to wake up. Because if they don't wake up, they ain't going to go to heaven. Right? Because ain't nobody chosen that far. You chosen to believe. And since you were his true children, we are qualified to share in all his treasure. Whose idea was that? Okay. For indeed, we are what? And what? God himself. And since you're joined to Christ, we all inherit all that he and all that he. So you got everything that he has. And you also got everything that he is. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is lay hands on the sick, sick recoverer. He is a prophet of your future. He is, he is. Come on, you didn't just get the benefit package. You got everything he is. He is speaking to Lazarus, and you can too. He is speaking to the mountain, and you can too. He is speaking to trees, and you can too. He is speaking to everything. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is. He is, he is. what well, he could do. We can have who he is, and we could be who he is. That means everything's equal to you. You can have it. Want to know where? Galatians 2.20. Look at this in the Passion. Two more scriptures, you're done. I know. Just stay here. I'm going to keep you all day. My old identity. Now, we've been reading this, but you got to pull this in. My old what has been what? So the old way I think about myself is not the new way I need to be thinking about myself. Because I'm not who I think I am. I am who he says I am. I, I, think I'm, I, I think I'm bad. You think wrong. Look at me. I don't, think, I don't think I'm a good person. You think wrong. You are. My lifestyle's all jacked up. You just don't know who you are. Once I tell you who you are and you learn, you won't be living like that no more. You ain't going to need all that stuff you think you need to fulfill something in your life or fill a void. Once you get Jesus, I'm going to fix all that. Because he's going to fix it. It ain't going to be me. I'm just going to fix your head. When I fix your head, he'll fix your heart. You'll start thinking, right? oh, you know, I was all, I, no, no, he's going to fill all that up. Whose idea was this? Watch this. And I've been co-crucified with the Messiah and I no longer live. I have you breathing. Well, he gave me his life. I told him, you know, Raleigh, I told you that. Can you ever try to breathe on purpose? You ever play around and do that? I needed like a bag, man. Like I think I hyperventilated or something. I was like, why not I sitting there? You know, like when you go to bed at night and you hear yourself breathing? Usually during the day you don't hear yourself breathing. I tried to, like, get the rhythm of breathing. Oh, my God, I almost passed out. I was like, <sighs> and, you know, you, like, you throw your rhythm off because you're trying to breathe. Has anybody crazy as me tried this? You're like, how does he do this? Like, how do I know when to breathe? Like, you know, it was real quiet one night. I was sitting there, and I was like, I was, like, breathing. I was like, 
I'm going to try to breathe for myself. I screwed it all up. I was like, <gasps> I was like thinking, I got to get a bag, man. How do I go back the way it was working without me trying it? Who gave you the breath to breathe? Who gave you the life? How do, who got you born again? How are you even stinking here? Look at your neighbor say, how are you here? Look at your neighbor say, what are you doing here? How'd you get here? It was his plan. It was his idea. And how many of you are born again? Then it ain't you no more living in you. It's him living in you. Look what he said. For the nails. What? This is how he sees it. For the nails that crucified him crucified you. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. That's identification. Paul never speaks of himself outside of his in him reality. He said, when he hung up there 2,000 years ago, so did I. And the nails that went through his hands went through mine. And the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. And we live this union as, watch this, one. Whose idea was that? One with him. One with Christ. You're not who you think you are. You're him. Watch this. Who loves me so much that he gives himself for me. But I want you to see this. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son. He gave you his faith to live this life. You know what's keeping you alive right now? His faith. He gave you his faith. Use it. It ain't just your faith. It's your faith and his faith, and his faith now takes over. It's your faith and his belief system. And how did you get saved? By grace through faith. Grace is keeping you going. Faith is keeping you going. Everything. Because he what? He dispensed his life into mine. Look at this last scripture. I'm going to give it to you. It's new. Let's do it in the King James. Grant, if you're up there, go to Hebrews chapter 6. Please. I want you to see this. Watch this. Verse 6, 13. We're going to read 13 through 20, and it's a wrap, okay? You got this? Read it with me. Be open. As long as you stay open, you're safe. For when God made promise to Abraham, right? This is what we've been talking about, this promise, this great promise. Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. You know what that means? When God looked in the earth for somebody to find a covenant with, he knew he could find no one with the same character and credibility, so he made a covenant with himself. God and Jesus cut this covenant. It's perfect. Man could not be involved. That's why he put Abraham to bed. Because if Abraham would have got involved, he would have been tainted by man's sin. So God and Jesus, the Bible says that Abraham seen in a, vi a vision, he said darkness came over and the offerings were there and everything he saw, but God put him to sleep. And God and Jesus passed through the covenant to make a perfect covenant that cannot be broken. Man was not involved in this covenant. Man received the benefit of the covenant, but man never cut it. Because if man would have cut it, it could have been tainted because of sin. It was God and Jesus made an eternal covenant for mankind forever. That's what he's talking about. Because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. God and Jesus made a deal. Watch this. Saying, surely, blessing I will bless thee. Multiplying I will multiply thee. Sounds like Genesis in the beginning, correct? Look at this. Keep going. 16. And after so, he had patiently. You can go back. That was my bad. You went ahead of me. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. The promise is here. It's already done. We, we, we're patiently enduring too long. I ain't got no problem with patience, but patience needs to speed up. And it speeds up with revelation knowledge. Revelation and faith will move time. It'll speed this stuff up. Watch this. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Beautiful. 16. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is an end of the strife. Once you have agreement, strife's gone. You want to get out of a fight quick? Agree on something. Husbands and wives, easiest way to get out of strife is just agree that God will lead you. You might want to go right. He wants to go left. You want to go left. He wants to go right. Everybody's got strife. Stop. Just go, we agree that God will lead us. Let's leave this conversation because this is going to go nowhere, right? For men, verily swear by the greater, the end is all the strife, right? It ends it. Watch the next verse. We're in God to show, 
who? Wherein God willing more abundantly to show the who? Who's the heirs? What did he do? The immutability. The unchangeableness. The not going to change my mind, God. Of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. That by two mutable things, which is what? Impossible for God to lie. His oath, his promise. You can have strong consolation who have what? To lay hold of the hope upon us, which hope we set before us as an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Here's what he said, ready? He said, how do you know? Look at me, I'm done. He goes, how do you know I'm going to come through? How do you know? How do you know what you can have? I put it in the book. I put it in the pages. This is how you know I'm not backing up to the heirs. If you can find it in that book, you can have it. Say, well, I don't see it. I could care less what I see. Faith doesn't walk by what it sees. Faith only walks by what it believes. I believe it. That's it. I know who I am. I don't care. I could care less what it looks like. Who cares what it looks like? This promise is sure and steadfast. I found it. I found that promise. I'm hanging on it. I'm believing it. And I'm not just asking, I'm demanding in the earth. And the more you start operating this, the greater you're going to see all the things that God has for your life. Come on, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these guys. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for opening their eyes. Let them see and let them know greater than ever before. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, we know we're heirs of this promise. We know we're going to walk in the faithfulness of this promise. And we thank you that when we, we're ne never going to, do this with me. Stand up on your feet. I feel this right now. Lift your hands to heaven and make this your confession. But get your, sorry, get your belief system ready before we even pray. Some of you in here, you're never going back. I'm not going back. I don't care where I was a minute ago. Two minutes ago before I sat down, before, once I stood up, something changed. Something shifted. I'm never going back to where I was. This is your commitment today. I'm never going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. We're not gonna, we're not gonna second guess God. We're not gonna second guess this covenant. We're not gonna, we're not even gonna have, we're not even gonna put this thing in question anymore. I know this is it. It's solidified for me once and for all, and that's it. I'm done. I don't care about my I'm prophetic right now. So if you hear me, it's prophetic. Okay? So you're gonna run with this. I'm tired. I don't care about my performance. I don't care about my brand of Christianity. I don't care about my lifestyle right now. I can care about none of this. Because I try to disqualify where God put me based upon my immaturity. And that day, those days are done. I'm growing in a place of faith. And now I know who I am. And from this moment forward, I'll never question God again and what he wants to do. I'll never question the growth. I'll never question the, the places. I'll never question the path. I'll never question the decision. I'll never question again. Oh, God, if it's you. Forget about it. The God, if you think it's over. Now, today, it's dead. I know it's you. I know you want me there. Whatever that is, that dream on the inside, that plan on the inside, whether it be whatever you need, that's it. I'm never going, oh, God, no more, oh, God days are done. I'm a son of God. I know I'm a son. I'm a son of God because I got born again. I got born again because I love God. And now that I'm a son, I'm an heir and I'm going to live like a Lord. I'm not leaving this revelation. Six months from now, I'm not leaving it. I'm never going back to maybe. I'm never going back to it. I'm walking in my dominion. And now this sonship produced an heirhood. And this heirship that I got right now put in lordship. And now that I got it, I know I'm here to demand and command in the earth. And the devil in hell and demon in hell is going to stop me. And as of right now, my life's changing forever. I'm never going back to that old way of thinking. When that old way of thinking wants to creep in my head, I'm going to beat it out of my head. I'm going to cast it down. I'm going to rebuke it. I'm going to discipline it. I'm going to shatter that wrong image. I know who I am and I know what I got. The Bible told me today who I am. And I believe more about what God said about me than what I think about me. And I'm not what I want to be. I'm a whole lot better than I used to be. And my life's going to another level today. I'm never going back. We ain't going to talk goofy in the house no more. We ain't going to talk sick. We ain't going to talk lack. 
We're not going to talk beneath. If it doesn't leave me an airship, I'm not talking about it. And I'm going to demand and command. And I got one adversary, one adversary only. It's the enemy. And guess what? I got power and dominion over him. And I'm going to start telling him what's going on now too. I'm walking in dominion in the earth. My sonship is producing dominion in the earth. I ain't never going to be the same again. So you got your hands lifted to heaven. Just say this, Father, from this moment forward, that's all I'm going to believe. And you quicken me mentally, spiritually, and physically every single time my thinking gets off track. Rapidly correct my thinking from this moment forward. I'm never going back. Another minute of my life. I'm taking my place. I'm running my race. I'm walking in grace. And I'm going to finish on top in everything. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Now listen, listen, listen. Close your eyes real quick. I got her with me. If you ain't, if you ain't saved, if you ain't saved, you need to get, don't leave this building not being saved right now. Look, I'm going to do this for a minute. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I'm going to be rough about it. Because if you don't know for sure you're not born again, are you kidding me? You came to church to get born again. So close your eyes in the building and just raise your hand. Don't even ask yourself, do I need to get saved? If you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, lift your hand in the air right now. Lift it in the air right now. That's the only reason why you're here. Lift it in the air right now. Put it in the air. There's one. There's maybe two. I don't know. If you don't know for sure your relationship with Jesus, get your hand in the air. That's easy. Simple. One, two, three. Lift it in the air. Say this out loud. Say, Jesus, if you're watching online, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I want to be a son and a daughter of God. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed on, that prayer, yeah, come on. If you prayed that prayer for the first time oh, and you'd like coming. some information about go. what you did, you can go back to our welcome center. It says Relevant leave. Lounge back there. Um, and, and they will pray with you. They'll give you some information. Well, how many of you are glad you came to church today? I came to church. Well, you know, before we dismiss, today is a national holiday. No, it's not St. Patrick's Day, even though it is St. Patrick's Day. I love you. My 100% Italian husband is every Irishman's dream. Oh, my dad. He was born on St. Patrick's Day 53 years ago. Thank you, God. 53. See, 53. Mama Sarno's Italian, but Mama Bill, my mama, she's Irish, so she was particularly happy about about me marrying. Me she probably prayed me in. She did from the day I was born. She prayed you in for 30 Thanks, years. She prayed you, you in. You carried me. She prayed for me. All right. Um. So, but we're you gonna just celebrate more. Pastor Chris today. Thank you for everyone who Thank brought him a card hey, online. Listen. Thank you guys. I thank you guys so much for the cards and all the stuff you did. You guys are amazing. I love you. I, there's no better. I love it when you burn, when this falls on a Sunday. Because there's nothing more I want to be doing than spending time with you guys doing what we're doing, man. I love you guys. And I really, from the bottom of our heart, I'm being serious. I know you, you, can, you can even hear it in me. You know it, man. Thank you guys for doing what you're doing and reaching this community. Man, I'll tell you what. I mean, it's the only thing that's really compelling me. It's just we got to go get these people. We got to go, we got, I don't know how much time we got, you know, and I want these people, I want these people to be in the kingdom with us, man. So like, we're pushing real hard there because we want you guys to know, man, it's so important what we're doing. And I appreciate you guys, the love and just the texts and everything you did. You guys are amazing. There's no other place to spend my birthday there with you guys. I love you. And let me get to the lobby. So wait, but okay. before we do that, happy birthday we go. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Chris. Happy birthday to you. Hey, thank you. I'm going to be on there. Wait for He's me. He's going to go to the lobby. Go get a Come cupcake. Don't forget this Saturday. Eat the cupcakes. We have beautification day. If you would like to come and help get this campus beautiful, uh, we'll be outside, inside. Bring your rakes and your all your wheelbarrows and all that stuff. Bring your gloves. You are dismissed. God bless you. Go do what you do today and we'll go get a cupcake on your way out. <laughs>